Hello, it's Melinda from Alexis and Melinda's Art Space. Tonight I thought I would play with some of my new paints I got from Riot Art and Craft. They had 50% off, plus they had, it's massive, Gesso Super Duper Special. Well, fairly good price, so I took the plunge and spent $100. So <clears throat> the Gesso Big Tubs were down to $15 each, and you had to buy two, so I did bring the two to the table. And then I grabbed some other paints. So these big high flow ones that are 250 mils, uh, I think they come down to be 10.99. I buy these off for a while. So purple's my favourite colour, so I wanted to try that one out. Would never pay $20 for them. I like things when they're half price. I also got fluoro yellow, which I thought would be fun to play with. And then I got what colour is this? It's obviously fl oh fluoro pink. Then they had this one on special for two dollars. They had had some um, a couple of weeks ago. They had daily specials, and I sort of got sucked into this one. This was a couple of days ago before the gesso, but still on special. So this was two dollars. The aqua turquoise. I've seen a couple of other YouTubers use this paint. So these ones normally would have been six dollars. So six dollars for two hundred and fifty mils of paint. I thought was a good deal. Um, so I ended up with turquoise, and then I bought purple again because I kind of like purple. And then I got night. I'm having a lot of fun with night. And this says it's a thicker formula, so it should be good for stenciling and stuff. And then I got, I don't know why I got brown, burnt umber. I don't really like brown, but that's all right. We've got it to play with now. And I was looking around at these other paints. Then I found these tubes of ultra matte paint, which I thought would be fun to play with. So these ones where sorry i'm just looking at my price list 349 by the looks of it hang on you see matte paint 349 it looks and some were 499 so some of these are 399 and some are 499 depending on the color again it's not i would never pay eight or nine dollars for um, a tube of paint but I thought ultra matte sounded pretty cool so this one is emerald I'm going to test these out in a minute off-white I thought found a good purple so if I do like these kinds of paints I will get some more different colors pale blush I thought it'd be good for people black emerald I'll oh, get two emeralds I'm a gooseberry I wonder if I meant to do that or they sent me two berry let's have a quick look at my invoice I may have ordered two emeralds by mistake, or they've sent me the wrong colour. I also got a mini glue gun or a glue gun. They were three dollars. It's always good to have. There's emerald, emerald. What's well, on my invoice twice? So I'll have to go and have a look. Maybe I ordered it twice because I like the colour. Oh, their website's interesting to navigate. So I've got two emerald colours. So let's play with the gesso first. I've got my art journal here. So we're just going to do some backgrounds in my art journal. Move all this paint out of the way and just have a bit of a pop out of the paint. Hopefully I like the gesso because now I have two litres of it to use up. I use a lot of gesso um, and so does my daughter. So it's nice when I can get it affordable. Let's just gesso over this page. So the great thing about... Um, riot was their packaging is amazing and i might have to get scissors to get this off the sticky tape every jar of paint was sticky taped up there was bubble wrap in the box i've been ordering quite a fair bit of stuff whoops since covid since lockdown oh this is going to be a bit loud maybe i'll pause it and come back hang on a minute i'm glad i paused that was a bit loud and i had to go get a pair of scissors to cut it off so what i'm going to do is when i'm actually using this paint for art journaling and such, I'm actually going to put it into a smaller container because I can imagine this one litre container sliding off my desk, just getting a paintbrush ready. Oh, that lid's really interesting to get undone. Barely fits my hand around it. Ugh, really? <laughs> oh, there we go. It's coming, it's coming, it's coming. Okay, so it's not actually sealed. It doesn't actually have much of a smell. I'm just going to take some out of the lid. So I just want to see if it's sort of plasticky or gritty or looks really nice. It's going on nice. So usually these this gesso is um, 
I believe about 30 maybe $40 a tub a litre not sure I got it for 15 and it was under half price 20 I think was half price it must have been $40 um, which I thought was really cool I believe all this brand um, is actually a riot art and craft brand or urban crafter I'm not sure but this one seems to be the Araldo di Pulo, which is the brand of the gesso and the paint. It's going on nice and nice and easy. We'll see it when it dries. I'm just going to take it out of the lid. It's plenty in the lid. What I'll also find is if I don't put this into a smaller jar, um, when I use my gesso that I've currently got, it's a 250ml container, I'll just tip some of this in. And it will keep the air out of this as well as I um, use more of it. And I'm sure if I had that big tin on my desk, Alexis or I would throw it on the floor. Well, not intentionally, but probably would. Actually, it's covering not quite nicely. It's not... I can still see a bit of the map underneath, which is what I like to do. Just let me put the lid back on that before it does go swishing off the desk. I'll see if I can get it on. I think that's on tight. Actually, I might just put it on the floor. I've already got a nice blue spot on my mat because of Alexis. So let's just give that a quick blast with the heat tool. My paper is bubbling up a bit. This is two sheets of paper glued together. Or it could be this could be just one. Or is it two? No, I think it's two glued together. So I'll just give it a blast heat tool and then I'll be back. So nice and dry it's got a nice i don't know whether you hear that it's got a nice bit of tooth to it so it's a bit gritty so that's really cool it dried a bit more transparent than i would have liked but i can always do it a second coat so it's not a big deal hey i have two layers of it i can always do a second coat so i actually quite like it i was wondering about the quality a friend of mine did a video on some of their watercolor paints and they were very gelatiny and not very nice and i was hoping this brand wasn't like that so let's have a go at these high flow paints because these look really, really cool. I've been eyeing these off for ages. I very rarely shop at Riot when everything's full price. I wait for their half price sales, um, which they have on a fairly regular basis, I must admit. Um, a bit like Lincraft, have 40% off nearly every three months. So I barely go in there and buy things when they're full price. I always wait for a sale. Unless I'm in desperate need of something which doesn't happen very often. I'm usually only stocking up on paints and stuff like this. So the, the high flow paints are actually a bit more liquidy than... They actually do an awesome job of taping these all up. Riot actually had awesome packaging. Everything was bubble wrapped and these tubes of paint were put in little boxes. Like four or five of them were in one box and three or four of them were in another box. So that was really cool. I've had some deliveries and some of the company's packaging leaves a lot to be desired. Spotlight and Kmart are a couple to name. So I can hear there's a ball bearing in it, so I'm just going to give it a shake. So I'm wondering if there's something in here to take off. Yes, there's a little doohickey or whatever it's called. Doohickey, a plastic or a paper, I can't get it off. <coughs> oh, excuse me, i got a frog in my throat. I'm not sick. I haven't started coughing since I opened the... Maybe because I turned the heater off that's right beside me and rather loud. So I like that these have a little spout on them. Ooh. Whoa, that was a big blob. Oh, 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 they are high flow. Oh, they're almost like inks. Oh, my God. They are very very runny which i expected but haven't played with high flow paints before and i've possibly got that all over i do have some um baking paper between my next page so i don't wreck anything Ooh, they're nice and translucent too Ooh, that's kind of cool put some pink on so they are very i have to remember they are very liquidy these would actually be fun to put in. I wonder if these would work in, because they're so liquidy, they're almost like um, inks. I've got some water brushes. I wonder if it would be thin enough to put in water brushes. 
I sort of got the fluoro colours because one of the YouTubers I watch, um, um, Neve Bellamy, I'll link her channel below if I remember. She uses a bit of neon to intensify colours of things. I'm going to check my book up again. I didn't put as much of the pink. Let's put a bit more so it runs. Um, as I said, I'm just fooling around making a background. And I will come back and probably put some collage over these pages at another update. Ooh. Just not wanting to, to run absolutely everywhere. But I do like the drips I get. Ooh. Maybe I need a red for Halloween. Ooh, I think I do. I'll grab some of that. Oh, the pink is very ooh, that's interesting. The pink is very um translucent when you spread it out. Okay, so best the pink stays drippy because it's very, very translucent. I'll just grab that out of the spine. Oh, it makes a nice orange. It has a bit of an odour. It has a bit of a smell. Yes, yeah, so when you do spread the pink out, they are quite, it is quite transparent. And then the yellow is not so wonder if they are different. It says it. Light fastness 2. No idea what that means. I think that's it doesn't fade. Hands are yellow. Okay. Ideal for paint with paint pouring mediums. <laughs> I don't use it. Paper. Wet shade before use. Use it room temperature. High flow acrylics are highly intense and flexible. Sorry, I'm videoing through my laptop and it just um decided it wanted to go into a screensaver mode i'll have to watch that i've got a new laptop and i just don't know how to use it so much use a wider range of applications liquid art painting okay interesting pigment transparent series oh okay so that one's transparent series what's the purple opaque series ah the purple's opaque i don't know whether that was actually written on this one's transparent yeah, that one's very transparent. Let's put some purple on. I don't think transparent or opaque was written on the computer. It may have been. I'll have to have a look at my receipt. Probably I didn't pay attention to it. I did do this sort of in a hurry when I was supposed to be doing other stuff. The sale for the gesso sort of come on a day when I was supposed to be working and doing all sorts of stuff on the computer at a virtual retreat. So I sort of did this order rather quickly. Another shape. So this one should be opaque. Let's actually... I'll go, ah! I've got the receipt here. Let's see if they are. No, it doesn't actually say on the receipt if they're transparent or opaque. That's okay. So this one is opaque, it's saying. So it shouldn't be see-through. I'm going to have fun with these, I can tell. Let's do this. Whee! Okay. Little too much paint. So this one's more opaque, which is nice. Don't know that I'm happy with the pink. I don't know. I'll have to see. I have to put on quite thick to um to see if it will dry that intense in colour or whether it will not dry. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just putting marks on places. Soaking some of this paint up. It's hard when you're buying things online. Even when you're buying them in shops, it's sort of with the paints. It's um, hard to know what they'll sort of do until you try them. Sorry, you probably can't see. I'm just tilting my book to get the drips going every which way. They're actually mixing quite nicely up here too. A little brighter in real life. I've lost a lot of that pink. Let's dry this off and see what they look like dried. I'll just turn this off for a minute. Pause this. Decide I don't like the drips and I'm just going to paint this all over. Oh, you can actually see some of the drips. Whoops. You can actually see some of the drip lines underneath. 
So the purple and the yellow paint out really nicely. The pink is very, very light. But I do like that as a purple. Over the yellow, it's not so nice. That's all right. If I don't like this page, I can always cover it up. I'll go ahead and dry this off and I'll be back. So that's dried off now. I'm not looking the best, but I've sort of had to play around with the paint. So I might come in again and finish off or we'll do some more in the background. I'm liking this down here. Just stop talking about this. Very purple. But that's okay. I think it needs some stenciling over the top of it. So I'm going to grab my other art journal. Let's put that one up to dry. It wasn't 100% dry. And I'm going to have a play with these other paints. Let me just find a page that I haven't used before. That might be difficult. I'm getting to the end of this art journal. Should have had a page already open, shouldn't I? Oh, really? I have to grab a different art journal. I've got some black and white pictures in here I'm saving to do something with. I just haven't got to that yet. I'm trying to find a white page. Oh, here's one. So what I want to do is grab a spatula silicon brush and I'm going to try out some of these paints so we don't need two emeralds so put that up there we'll try out some of the darker colors and we'll put some of the whiter colors over the top so these are ultra matte so these sounded like fun do they have oh they're sealed up as well ah, that's interesting I've just done an upgrade to my camera and there's no time running or is the time running up the top in really really small print that's the time up the top in really, really small print that I can't see until I get off my chair. Oh, well. Ooh. Ooh. So I can put that on nice and thick and it'll be opaque or I can scratch it back and it'll be transparent. I love that colour. Ooh, probably glad I got two of those now. It's a beautiful colour. So it's almost dry as I scraped it, um, scraped it really, really thin. I do like that colour. I do like how they're drying matte too. Ooh, these might be my new love of paints. So this one is purple. Looks a bit mauve. Oh, it is. It's a very light mauve. They're going to stack on top of each other. Oops, picked up some of the green. I don't know whether I prefer tube paints or bottle paints. So I'm on the fence. At least with tubes, you can squeeze most of the air out, which is handy. Um, so when they're getting a bit empty, you can sort of squeeze a bit of it out and it doesn't dry out as much. And these feel like, oh no, they're plastic. I was going to say they might be tin. Um, berry. Ooh, berry sounds nice. Colours that come up as one well, putting the lid back on, as vibrant as the um, actual in. Well, I'm liking this colour. I'm liking these three colours together. Should be drying these colours, but I'm just being quick. So I'm liking these three colours together. It's a bit better than that first page I just made. And I just thought I'd throw some paint some pages tonight. I'll give it a play. I have been having computer issues all day. I'm about over computers. And yet I have to use one to film this video. Ugh, computers. I hate technology. I don't like changing technology. I've had to upgrade a computer. My computer went to the chip. Poor computer went to the graveyard. 
So I don't like upgrading computers and operating systems because then I've got to find everything again and I just don't like that. I'm really liking these paints though. It'd be interesting to see when they dry. So I've got black, white and pale blush. So I've done that one. Oops, stuck my finger in it. Let's get rid of this picture because I don't like this picture. So I'm working in my altered book, which is altered um, uh, ah, I'm going to have to work out how to extend this laptop time. I can see that coming a mile off. Sorry about that, guys. Um, what was I going to say? So this is a nice black coverage, which is nice. Um, I lost train of thought before I was, the computer eluded me. Oh, I'm working in my altered book. Um, altered art journal, I think I was talking about. I don't know what I was talking about. It's been late. I've had computer issues all day. I don't like changing operating systems. I don't like changing computers. So I'm all out of sorts. So some time to play in my art journal. I'm going to dry this black before I put the white over the top of it. Just because I don't want to make an ultra mess. More than I normally make. I'm going to wipe my spatula off a little bit of damp paper towel I've got over there. I'm going to dry this off. It's very quick to dry in the thinner parts. Be back in just a minute. I'll put some white over this paper. That's all dried off. This is really nice. Really nice paint. Actually reminds me a bit of Dina Wakeley's paints. Um, not Dina Wakeley, wrong one. Delusions paints. Her um, Delusions paints that are very matte when they dry because they don't have the glossiness in them. I'm liking these paints. I'm going to have to keep an eye on for specials. Build up my colour collection because I can see, because I, I don't like a lot of the glossy paints, like I'll use them, but sometimes it's nice and it's going to be nice to see how pens and stuff go over these. It's going to be interesting. So it's interesting if you scrape it really thin, it goes a bit translucent, but if you stack it on sort of thick, it goes um, opaque. I'm going to try the pale pink. Pale blush, sorry. Put some pale blush on the side. Well, that might be a face colour. I want to get into painting some faces. So I thought pale blush might encourage me to do that. We'll see if it's a... Oh yeah, it's like a face colour. Oh, it's a nice face colour too. And it's layering up nicely over those paints, which would be handy because if I want to paint a face on a background, I can layer this on and it's going to block out the background, which is really, really cool. Ooh, I'm liking these paints. Hmm. First ones, nah. I'm sort of on the fence about, but these ones I really like. No, I sort of like the first ones. Okay, I'm going to dry this off again. So this is Nelly Dry, so I like how the flatness of it. And this is going to work great in videos because I hate getting shine off my paints in the videos. So that will work really, really cool. Let me put that one down. Let's bring this horrible one back. Might end up dressing over that. It sounded good in my head just to throw some paint on the pages. Um, it's obviously not dry. <sighs> Having one of those days today where I shouldn't have got out of bed. Can't do anything right. So that's obviously still a bit wet. So let's Flip to another page and we're going to try out these other paints. Let's do this page. So this page has got some texture paste on it and stuff. I liked applying it with the palette knife, so let's do that. So these ones, let's go live to darker. So these ones, I just checked one. They don't have a thing to seal them up. So this said it was a thicker formula. Quite translucent though. 
let me scrape it on the tin. Interesting. Go up and over that texture paste that's been there for a while. I've been meaning to do something with this page for ages. I do that in my art journals. If I've got extra paint or texture paste, I'll just go and wipe it on another page and then come back to it eventually. I might even try stenciling with some of this over the top. That'd be cool. Oh, I forgot I had a big blob there. Let's just clean it off with the semi-wet paper towel I've got the other side. That's a nice colour. That was the one I got for $2. Let's do the purple. He doesn't want some purple in their life. Whoops. As I said, not sure why I got the brown. Sounded like a good idea at the time, I suppose. I'm just going to fold this up so I don't go over the next page when I'm doing something. When I'm doing this. And that purple is a nice colour. Mmm, liking the purple colour. Purple's one of my favourite colours. texture paste but you're still seeing it underneath which is really cool what do we go we'll go to night really liking Dina Wakely's night like it's a really dark blue and I was hoping this was a sort of the same harbour night it said I sort of picked colours in the jar in the different mediums that oh I like in this colour they sort of went together so I could use them together even though I do mix up all my paints um, I mix up the brands and whether they're thick or whether they're thin doesn't bother me usually I go by color oh, and there goes my fingers seriously so this has got a bit of a greeny sort of undertone which is really nice so this will be nice on art journal pages as well. Maybe I need a smidgen more paint. No. Maybe I do need a smidgen more paint. Oh, no. It's actually amazing how much paint is still left on the spatula. Okay, I might give that a quick dry. And then I might grab a sponge and see if we can stencil with the black. That would be rather cool. Because it says it's thick. Let's see if it's stencil thick. So that's fairly well dried. If you can see up here how this one is a bit shiny because the light's shining off it. So I'm just going to cut this black bit off my sponge. Oh, I should have done it with not my fussy cutting scissors, but they're right next to me. Okay. I said I'm going to stencil with black, but no, I'm going to stencil with the night colour. I don't think I'll swatch out the brown because I really don't have anything to put brown on. This is one of the stencils I design. The paint's 90% dry, but I just wanted to see how it's stenciled. Need a bit more paint, need a bit spongy. Because you don't want a really runny paint when you're stenciling because you don't want it to run under the stencil. And the less you've got on your sponge, the better sometimes. Oh, I'm liking that. Let's do some up here. That's where you use up the paint that I put out. And yes, my stencil is very dirty with acrylic paint. I don't tend to wash my stencils unless using texture paste or gel medium on them. I'm very naughty. I admire people that keep it. Let's just throw some up here. I admire people that can keep their art supplies very tidy, but it's not me. It's not enough hours in the day to clean everything up. It takes away my crafting time. I do like these three colours together. I think I'll be using these three colours together a bit more. It's 
excuse the noise in the background, the bunnies have decided they want to contribute to the video. So it is a, trying to see, so you can get it a bit thick, probably a bit thick there. If I try to fix it, I'll probably stuff it up. Um, so you can get it a bit thick and opaque, or it is sort of a little translucent as well. So, ooh, oops, I forgot some up here. May as well stencil all the acry bits. Sorry about the pouncing. I'm going to build myself a new art table. I've been saying that for ages. Oh, the days just get away from me. Work at the moment is just crazy. Oh, I do like that. It'd be a nice halloween -y page. But yeah, I can tell this is shining a lot on the light and this is a bit glossy compared to that this paint that I used, which is the matte. I really like in the matte for videos because you don't get the gloss and the shine off it. So I'm going to dry that off and let's just swatch that brown colour on my... This is just some um, deli paper or thin like newsprint paper. Let's just see what the brown looks like. Oh, it's quite a nice brown. Pooey brown. <laughs> Again, don't know why I got brown. I've got other brown paints. Maybe I picked the wrong colour. Maybe they sent me the wrong colour. I don't know. Let me go see if my order says burnt umber. Nope, my order says they're brown amber, so I must have bought it. <laughs> no, self, don't do orders in a hurry. It's actually a nice brown colour. It'd be nice for trees and different things. Just um, don't have anything to swatch it out with it. But I do like these three colours together. They are looking really nice. The acre and the, the night, especially. Or the, what is it? Sorry, turquoise and harbonite, if we want to get exact. And the purple is just purple. So thank you for joining along. If you're stuck to the end, thank you for coming along and uh, watching me have a play with my new paints. They'll be cropping up in my videos a whole lot more often, especially these tube matte ones. Sorry, I'm just getting this paint out of my sponge. This is what I do on my drop papers, and then eventually I'll tear these up and they'll become pieces in my art journal. I don't like to waste anything. Thank you for watching. Bye for now. No. I decided after I finished that last video that I wanted to play on this page because I was getting so inspired. So I grabbed a magazine image and just wanted to use the eyes. I didn't know what I was doing. I just decided I wanted to, I don't know, do stuff. <laughs> a lot of my art journal pages, I don't have an idea of what I'm doing until I stick stuff down. So I decided to stick some eyes on. I have a real fascination with eyes and wings lately. I don't know, they keep appearing in my... Maybe I want to fly. I don't know. <laughs> they keep appearing in my art journal pages. I don't know. Just wings and eyes. It's funny. You'll see a lot more of wings appearing when I edit the next lot of videos. So just wanting um, to stick that down with some Mod Podge. I'm trying to use up the Mod Podge I have. It's not my preferred medium. I do prefer matte gel medium. But... Um, I did get some Mod Podge, super duper special a few years ago at Spotlight, so I'm do, I am trying to use it up. The thing with Mod Podge is it can become a bit sticky and stick your pages together. I'm obviously running over to get that. Um, so I do prefer, I'd love to use Liquitex Matte Gel Medium all the time, but the amount I go through and the amount my daughter goes through, just cost-wise, it's just prohibitive. So whatever I can get cheap and on sale, and if it works... Like Mod Podge does work, and if it's the only thing I can get at a reasonable price, I will use it. But there are some different brands now bringing out some really reasonable matte gel mediums, which is good. And being a magazine image, they slide around a bit. And it also, because of the glossiness, it also repels the matte gel medium a little. So you just got to be careful with the Mod Podge. Got to be careful when you put it on top, you don't put too much on. It can cause a really cool texture, um, but that's not what I sort of wanted this time. So when I'm gluing things down, I put a um, generous amount underneath the image and then go over the top with my paintbrush with a generous amount on the image as well. It dries clear. All matte gel mediums, whether it's Mod Podge or anything like that, all go on this cloudy white colour and then um, they will dry clear. So don't worry, it'll all fix itself in a minute. I haven't had a lot of problems with the Mod Podge sticking pages together because I do keep a piece of um, Glad Bake. I've dried that with a heat tool, see how it's nice and clear now. 
or I will go and seal my pages with neutral shoe polish when I'm finished to prevent the stickiness. I find if your book does stick together, don't force the pages apart, especially if you're in a hot climate. You're going to think I'm crazy, but go put it in the freezer for half an hour. Then the pages simply open up because it freezes the glue and allows it to release. So just putting some blue around the edges, or is that purple? I think it's blue, um, to hide the edges of the magazine. So I wanted, I almost wanted her to be peeping through the page, but I was being lazy and stuck her on top of the page. So just sort of putting some blue on and um, feathering it out so it doesn't look like I've just stuck the blue on top of the page. So I wanted her peeping out. Um, this is the first time I was using my webcam with my new laptop and I lost a bit of footage at the end. Um, but I've put some still photos at the end so you can see what I did. I unfortunately didn't realise my laptop was timing out or going to snooze. And I didn't realise that when it did that, the filming stopped. Yeah, not real technical. Um, <laughs> I fixed that now. I put it on a two hour limit and I never sit for two hours in one sitting and do my art journaling. So I've changed the snooze to two hours so it won't happen again. Here I decided to use some of these high flow paints that I was playing with earlier in the video and doing some drips. I'm um and ahhing about the high flow paints. So I did go and buy under blue. So I've got now blue, purple, yellow and pink. So I think I need to experiment with them more. Ideally they're not meant for art journaling. Ideally they're meant for paint pouring. But who really uses what things are intended for? I don't. I like the drips and how you can get drips and things and... I, just, I think I need to play more. This is sort of the second time I used it. Just holding my book up and sort of tapping it so the drips drip down but don't drip down quickly. You put too much on, they will gush down and I didn't want that. I wanted drips at different lengths. So I'm drying the drips in between colours mostly so I don't get colour mixing. The drips don't have to be 100% dry, they just have to be sort of crust over, if that makes sense. I do get a bit of... Um, mixing of the colours but I didn't want a complete mixing of the colours. Make sense? I know the purple is really subtle and it's really hard to see um, but you certainly see the yellow and the pink. These are certainly large tubs of paint so I will be uh, dripping for a while. I even have a go with some canvases, that would be fun. Um, so again just picking the book up, I know it's a bit hard to see, and trying to um, tap it a few times on the table just to get it to drip a lot quicker. I love how the pink dripped. I love how like the drips are all different angles and all different lengths. That's really fun. It just depends on, I'm getting a bit of mixing there with the purple, but I'm okay with that. Dripping is fun to do on your pages, but it, it's a bit of a learnt skill. How much to put down, how watery to have your product. Obviously, this is a high flow paint, so it's a very liquidy paint, but it's also a very high pigmented paint as well when it's in sort of this form. The pink when you sort of brush it out is very um, translucent but the purple and the yellow are really nice colours. So just draw your drips in between if you don't want them to mix. If you want them to mix and you've got colours that will mix nicely um, you don't need to dry them off. Just drying it with a heat tool. You can dry it with a hairdryer, you can let it naturally dry but I'm an impatient kind of person so I always grab out my heat tool and hurry things along. So grabbing the yellow. And I do apologise about the fuzziness, I think, of the video. I've had a bit of play around with my video settings and got them so it focuses better and it doesn't jump and focus. That yellow ran a little bit quick. Obviously got too much in the one spot. So just mopping it up with some paper towel. I love playing around with the drips. I think it's just, it adds something to your page and whether it's dripped like this under the face or whether it's dripped on the other page. Obviously grabbing something. I thought I edited this right down. I did take a fair bit of footage out of me umming and ahhing and doing things. So again, just trying to get that yellow to drip just a little bit more. It was sort of sitting there being very, very stubborn. So let's go throw some more on. Why not? 
if you wanted to drip in a certain spot you can sort of help it along like I did and put a little bit of a line and it'll sort of drip down um, the drips sort of have a mind of their own so if you want it to go in a specific spot good luck trying to get it there because I've wanted it to go in a specific spot and it just didn't want to so again just giving them a bit of a dry I decided to leave the drying in so you could see this video sped up about three times so it doesn't take long for them to dry so it doesn't take like half an hour or anything it takes about three minutes four minutes if that to get it dry enough to move on to the next stage I do apologize about the noise in the background if you can hear scratching I don't have mice or rats I have rabbits hmm if you're a long time viewer you would hear about the rascally rabbits they um, like to make noise when I film they live in the back or their run is in the back of the room where I film videos so I just wanted sort of to continue the drips on the other side of the page so I wanted some purple to come down I end up covering a lot of the drips that are on that left hand side of the page but I didn't know what I was doing after this part of the page and I don't often know where my art journal is going so I often do cover up a lot of things I do but the thing is my art journaling is for me a stress relief uh, take some time out of my day to do something to play to get messy I'm not really concerned about the end result yes I like it to look nice my page and I like to like it some pages lately I haven't liked um, but that's okay I've, I've taken that time just to relax especially at this time in 2020 with COVID-19 we all need to find something that we find joy in because we are home a lot more um, I really miss and we've been dealing with COVID since what March April May June July this is wow five months we're coming up to five months four and a half months um, and it's a long time to to be home most days I'm not used to being home this much um, and coming off Christmas my downtime from my shows to my work was Christmas as well so I had one show and then we shut everything down so it's it's a long time for me to be home a lot even though I'm enjoying being home a lot it's it's a different lifestyle to get used to I thought I'd get all this art done but my work is extremely busy at the moment which is fantastic um, but it'd be nice to have a bit more me time. I'm also a single mum of a 12 year old Alexis. She sometimes pops onto this channel if you're new to the channel. Um, and she keeps me rather busy being a 12 year old and pretty tweeny and all that. Um, our life is full of interesting things. And the bunnies, they, they take up a lot of time as well, telling them off. <laughs> so just adding some pink drips over on that side. I think that gets nearly completely covered up with the next stage, but that's okay. I sort of had nowhere for the drips to start from up there so I'm sort of trying to feather it out so they sort of don't look like they're hanging in midair underneath the eyes underneath the eyes they sort of had a grounding point like sort of I don't know why am I going to try to explain something I don't even know how to explain <clears throat> or why I did it oh I don't know sometimes I think I'm going crazy with my art journal pages I often watch other YouTubers and they just seem to do things flawlessly and mine just sometimes look like a hot mess but that's okay that's my life sometimes it's a hot mess I wouldn't have it any other way I wouldn't swap anything out of my life at the moment or apart from COVID we'd all swap that out um, but yeah some days my life is a hot mess that's okay I'd be bored if it wasn't <laughs> no, those, white, those yellow drips are just going wayward the good thing about putting drips over acrylic paint and that's acrylic paint in the background is if you don't like where the drips are going you can actually wipe them off which is handy I don't know why I'm starting to yawn I don't yawn all day the only time I yawn is when I'm doing a voiceover I don't know what it is editing videos is not the fun thing to do the fun thing is playing and often I will go through stages where I will go a month without editing a video and I've got videos sort of at the moment I don't have any but usually I have them scheduled for a week or two and then I can have that time if I don't feel like editing I don't have to but I don't have any up my sleeve at the moment so I'm back into editing videos 
So just dripping some more drips down. I sort of was having so much fun with doing the drips, I was not knowing when to stop. Knowing when to stop at an art journal page is a skill I'm still learning. About six years I've been art journaling, six, seven years. Oh, it could be even longer than that. Could be. I don't know. A long time. Um, and learning when to stop or learning when to stop adding figures to your page, whether it's drips, whether it's stamping, whether it's anything. And it goes for, I suppose, scrapbooking as well and card making. Knowing when to stop and say enough is enough is a learnt skill that I'm still learning. Often I'll go one step too far and then decide that I don't like the page, but that's okay. I learnt next time to not um, do it. So this is a bit of footage we lost. So I let that um, dry. I put my art journal aside to dry. And then I grabbed one of the new stamps that I've designed for my business. This vine stamp with dots. And I decided to grab some embossing powder and make some embellishments to stick on to stick on my page. So the great thing about these vine stamps that I like is I can twist and turn them. Yes, I can do them straight, but I'm having so much fun twisting and turning them around. So just using an embossing ink pad, these are really old embossing powders that I possibly got um, 15, 20 years ago. <laughs> I've been diving into a lot of my old stash trying to use things up. Embossing powders never go bad, or I haven't had any go bad. These are pipe dream ones. These, this company doesn't even exist anymore. Um, so it doesn't matter, any embossing powders, and I've got a few different, um, a few different brands there. So if you've never heat embossed before, it's a crystallised powder that you buy. You use an ink pad or some sort of glue to stick the powder in a design or on your page. Then you heat it up with a heat tool and all the crystals melt. And then you get like a shiny embellishment. Um, so I usually stamp two or three and then I will heat them up. If you stamp too many, the ink will dry and your crystals will fall off. Especially with this gold embossing powder, it's a little chunky probably not um, good for this type of embossing. I think these ones are more opals which are better for sprinkling on fatter surfaces like little bits of chipboard and tiles and all that sort of stuff. So when you're heating it up, um, you heat up one spot at a time. Just putting the bottles back there because my camera doesn't like when it's white on white. And then just moving the heat gun, you'll see, it's really hard to see in the video, but you'll see the crystals dissolve and become shiny and almost run across the image. So you're moving your heat tool really, really slowly until the bit in front of your heat tool is starting to melt. Clear as mud? Yeah. Heat embossing is so much fun. I sort of didn't do it for a while. My daughter loves heat embossing. And I'm starting to put all my powders in the one spot. I'm trying to organise my stash. Um, had to um, move craft rooms about 12 months ago and boxed everything up and still finding things because it was a quick move. We just had to move around the um, move around a couple of rooms for my daughter for a particular reason and we had to pack everything and my craft stuff up so I was just throwing stuff everywhere and I haven't had a chance to um, get everything out. Plus I sort of clean up my craft table which is my dining room table which is my everything table often and put things aside and don't actually put them back where they're supposed to go. A lot of things don't have a where you're supposed to go. So I'm trying to have a home for everything, if that makes sense. Loving this colour. I believe this is a Tim Holtz one. Rose quartz? Rose something? So that's my goal this year is to also being at home more, I have a bit more time to get organised. Um, that's my goal this year is to actually get organized and put all light products together like all my embossing powders together all my paints together all my um, matte gel mediums together and it's actually surprising uh, what I've bought and what I've forgotten I've bought yes oops but it's great to have all my supplies organized then I can have a great selection to use and your products don't go off as well. So just stamping a few more with the rose quartz. With the foam stamps I make a manufacturer, I like to hold the stamp to the page, whether I'm stamping an ink, paint or embossing um, ink pad, for about five seconds. It gives the ink, the paint, whatever, enough time to transfer to the paper. If you just stamp it down very quickly, and I tend to do this with rubber stamps as well, 
If you tend to stamp fairly quickly and lift up, the ink doesn't have enough time to grab onto the paper surface. So when I'm tipping the embossing powder out, I am tipping it onto it, just an A4 sheet of paper um, and then popping it back into the jar. I do need to get one of those little trays with the little funnels and things. I possibly have one somewhere, but I don't know where. As I'm um, stamping these, sometimes when I pick it up, I accidentally drop it and I might get a two-headed leaf or I might get a double stamp here and there. When I place the embossing powder on top, I can brush the excess off if I've got ink, if I've got embossing powder where I don't want it to set before you heat it. Does that make sense? Um, so you can knock the powder off, but sometimes I like the two-headed stamps and sometimes I'll do that on purpose. So it just depends what sort of mood I'm in. I think I got all sort of single ones this time because I was being a little bit gentle. I should have cut all these out. You probably don't need to see me sit here and emboss this many leaves. But as you can see, I can turn them to the left, I can turn them to the right, I can do them straight up, I can do them a little wonky, I can do them like in an S shape if I really wanted to. So this stamp is quite flexible in how you can use it. I do like products that you can use several different ways. Um, I don't like products that sort of have one use and you can't use them a second way if that makes sense. And the bunnies are scratching again. I'm just going to ignore them. I find that they hear me talking even though we talk in this room all the time and I have the TV going. They're getting quite loud. Um, it's, it's their time to chat back to me I suppose when I'm doing a voiceover. I don't know. Or it's possibly pay attention to me and not pay attention to what you're doing. That's possibly it with the bunnies. She's wrecking her cardboard box. We give the bunnies cardboard boxes that come in with deliveries and things. And we cut a couple holes in them so they've got an in and an out. And then they go and decide to make more holes in the boxes. And we give it a week or two when the box is no longer a box. It's a pile of cardboard. Then we have to give them a new box. Kids entertained I suppose. So this one's a bit easier to see with the um, embossing powder melting. You sort of want to move quite slowly over the embossing powder until it's all done. And then I tend to slowly go back over the leaf or over the design once more just to make sure all the crystals have dissolved. You can sort of see it going shiny. So this is a great way of making embellishments. So these foam stamps you can stamp in paint or ink directly on your page or you can make embellishments like this if you like to fussy cut. I don't mind fussy cutting. It's quite relaxing for me actually. So I do stamp a number of these off camera because I do end up using quite a few on the layout. So I actually don't let you sit through all of the heat embossing because that would be rather boring. Running out of things to say while we're heat embossing. <laughs> <laughs> so you just got to make sure you've got a heat tool when you heat emboss a hair dryer does not work I must mention that a hair dryer puts out heat and air this heat tool just puts out heat so you're wanting one that won't excuse me won't put out um, heat and air clear as mud yes And the other good point is don't stick your finger in the hot embossing um, uh, hot embossing powder when it's melted because it is hot and you might burn your finger. I've done that a few times. And again, my fingers don't really feel heat anymore. Thanks to a, a career of three and a half years at McDonald's. <laughs> Here we go. I grab my fussy cutting scissors. This is actually a pair of embroidery scissors. And bear with it, embossing powder is a lot like glitter. It goes everywhere and can be found everywhere for the next 10 years. Oh, I decided to do some, I must have left this in. Oh, this is green glitter embossing powder, I think. I don't know what color this is. I thought I cut this little bit out. But the bit of footage we have lost at the end is me actually, I turn the camera off and fussy cut them all out. Great job in front of the television and arranging them on the page. Um, I lost a bit of footage as well. 
But bearing in mind, I did procrastinate quite a long time with where I wanted them placed. So I didn't want you to be um, be bored with that. I believe it was black. Is it black or green? I don't know what colour that is. That's a big jar of embossing powder. Could be purple. Is it the purple one I've got? I don't know. On my laptop, the editing screen is very, very small. So it's hard to see what colour that one is. So I'd like to take this opportunity also to, if you like my kind of videos, um, it'd be great if you subscribe to my channel. Um, a lot of my people that watch my videos aren't subscribed, which I was really interesting, about half of you. So if you'd like to subscribe, that'd be great. And if you want to like and leave me a comment, I'd love to hear comments, constructive comments. Um, if you, there's a way I can improve my videos, um, just leave us a comment and let me know what you think. Um, I don't get offended if you don't like the Art Journal page or don't like the way I did something. I don't get offended. But constructive criticism, that'd be nice. So hopefully we'll hit a thousand subbies soon and we're planning something interesting for a thousand subbies. We'll have to wait and see. Possibly won't hit that till the end of the year. It keeps going up and then it keeps going down. Then it goes up and then it goes down. We get a bit excited and then it goes down. But um, we will see. And also share these videos with friends and family that are general as well. If you think they'd like to um, like to see what I am about and up to as well. And hopefully I can convince my daughter to come and do a few more videos in the next month or so. Um, we've just been busy bees lately. We're home more but we're more busy. Go figure that one out. So just heat embossing these last couple of leaves and then we should be showing you how I'm putting it on and I did take some close-up photos and some photos of the completed layout to put at the end of this video to show you what it looked like. I have played with this stamp a lot. This is probably my one, two, I've done a scrapbook page, one, two, three, probably done three or four layouts. Uh, art journal layouts with this particular stamp in different ways and I've done an art journal page uh, sorry a scrapbook page with it I'm in love with this stamp at the moment it's my sort of favorite thing to play with I have to design a new favorite stamp I think so we're coming to the end of the video this is uh, a little bit of putting it together um, I did lose a fair bit of footage here because I sort of also I think I forgot to turn the camera back on and then we've got some close-ups at the end of how the page looks. And as I said, I did procrastinate a fair bit on where to put them. So this is sort of how the layout ended up. These are the still photos at the end and some close-ups as well. Love how this one turned out. Might be making a few variations on this one. Maybe Did this be awesome on a canvas too. Ooh, maybe I'll do that one day. Thank you very much for watching and sticking with me to the end. Bye for now.